The Apollo Phantom V3 is a VIS, a very important scooter, but not because it comes with Ludo mode or has a kind of brakes that no other high powered dual motor electric scooter has, but because the Phantom disrupted an entire category of electric scooters when it came out. And if you're new to electric scooters, let me break down the two biggest categories. You've got smaller single motor scooters, most of which go 15 miles per hour. They're lightweight, easy to carry and fun, if not super exciting. And the other big category and the one that we're talking about today are your light heavyweights. These are 40 mile per hour dual motor scooters that weigh about 75 pounds. They're popular because these are the biggest, fastest and longest range scooters that are still just small enough that they can be carried upstairs or squeezed in the trunk of a car. Back in 2020, light heavyweights pretty much looked like this. They were fun, they were quick, but design wise, basically a plank with two round sticks attached. Enter the Phantom V1. It looked like nothing we'd ever seen before. The trigger throttle that had been on pretty much every high power scooter ever was now gone and replaced with the thumb throttle and a display that's three to four times bigger. The stem wasn't round and didn't wobble at all. The headlight was up high where car drivers could see it and the light coming out of it didn't suck. Most of all, the Phantom just felt good to ride because of the quad shocks and kick-ass ergonomics. This was the first scooter designed completely in-house by Canadian scooter company Apollo after quietly gathering feedback from their customer base of about 15,000 riders for a couple of years. I remember launch day pretty clearly because when one of the biggest scooter companies in North America comes out with a new flagship, for scooter nerds like me, that's the equivalent of a royal wedding. The world pretty much comes to a stop to watch the launch. Then when the Phantom actually arrived, we couldn't get it out of the box fast enough and other reviewers had pretty strong reactions too for all the reasons listed earlier. When the V2 came out, there were about 12 updates to the scooter, but what really stood out to me was it was the first time we'd ever seen a company bring out a new generation and offer an upgrade kit to bring V1 scooters up to V2. And now Apollo just did that again with a kit that will turn your fan of V2 into a V3. But upgrades are another story, so I'll just leave a link to the upgrade down below in this video's description because this is where our story begins. This is the Apollo V3 full review. The Phantom V3 starts at $2299. It has two 1200 watt motors and a total peak power of almost 3000 watts from the new very unusual Mach 1 motor controller with Ludo mode. Apollo had to design this motor controller in house because it needed to do two things that no other high power motor controller does and we'll show you those in just a minute. For a while, high power scooters were getting into a bit of an arms race where it seemed like the only thing that mattered was top speed and we may have contributed to that a little with headlines like these. But to their credit, Apollo didn't take the bait and spent their engineering dollars on ride quality, overall ergonomics and just being easy to use, which is why it's the only light heavyweight scooter that has an app. Apollo have always been masters of blending regen and mechanical braking. This brake lever may be my favorite thing about the Phantom V3. We saw a lever like this a while back on the super limited production Apollo Pro Ludo. Since then, Apollo has been quietly integrating variable regen brakes into the brake levers of the Apollo Air and the Apollo City. So on the V3, let's talk about the front facing brake levers first. Variable regen means the harder you squeeze the regular mechanical brake levers, the more regen brake you get too. And that's that's not how the regen brakes on most other scooters work. Usually they're triggered by the brake light switch, so regen is either on or off. But in both versions of the V3, whether you've got the hydraulic brake or cable operated disc brake version, the regen braking smoothly increases as you squeeze the levers. You can even use the app to fine tune the intensity. So braking takes less effort, you charge your battery when you stop, and brake pads are gonna last a lot longer. So that's pretty cool, but it's also fairly transparent, so you might not even notice it's happening. But what's really different is you also get the option of not using Using the mechanical brakes at all because this is a 100% regen brake lever. It's hard to even describe the feeling of this brake. It's so smooth, it feels sort of like a rubber band pulling you backwards. It's strong enough that it can stop the scooter with 100% regen brake if you want to, but will also never lock up the brakes. But my favorite way to use it is to stop with only the front brake lever plus the regen brake lever, basically using it as a substitute for the rear brake. And I'll show you why. When you're
you're stopping hard with mechanical brakes, it's really easy to lock up the back brake. When you skid, you wear out your tire, you don't stop as fast, and a skidding tire no longer cares if it's going forward or sideways, so you can end up unintentionally sliding sideways. Using the regen throttle instead of the rear brake means it won't lock up. The improvement in braking distance is measurable. The Phantom V3's brakes beat the Vissette 10 Plus and Mantis King GT, stopping from 15 miles per hour in just 9.5 feet. That's almost a foot shorter than the Phantom V2. So supporting this level of regen brake control is one of the reasons Apollo had to make their own motor controller. Over on the right side of the handlebars is a matching thumb throttle. We love thumb throttles because you're never gonna confuse it with the brake like you would with a trigger throttle. Also, the hand position is more comfortable, especially on long rides. Best of all, the V3's throttle has zero dead zone at the beginning of travel. Throttle response is as smooth as it gets from a non-sine wave controller. And that's because of the other thing the Mach 1 controller does, and that's self-calibration. When the scooter's assembled at the factory, the motor controller automatically calibrates itself to the exact motors installed in the scooter. Anybody who installs the V3 upgrade kit on their V2 will get to see this automated process. As usual, throttle response can be tuned by selecting ride modes one, two, or three. And of course, the V3 also has Ludo mode. And then you can fine tune acceleration further with the app. The fine tuning effect is subtle, but I measured acceleration set to five and again at 10 and could see the difference in the data. Let's check out the cockpit. Phantom V2 owners will notice that the old turn signal switch is gone because the buttons are now here and here. The new ones are much easier to push with gloves on. There are indicators on the dash to let you know when they're on and an audible reminder as well, but it was hard to hear in traffic when I had my full face helmet on. More important than the change in the buttons though, the V3 now has turn signals on both ends. Other little details I love versus the first gen are things like having exposed deck screws so you can get in there if you need to without pulling up the rubber cover and that the side stand is steel, not aluminum. This side stand can really handle some abuse. It's also designed to act as a crash slider, protecting the charge ports in the event of a tip over. Apollo updated the screw on charge port covers. They're plastic now, so they won't accidentally short out your port, but don't leave them dangling like I did. I left both hanging here during the range test and managed to bump one of them off of his leash with my foot. But if you keep them screwed on, that won't happen. We covered earlier how the Phantom was the first high power scooter we tested that basically eliminated stem wobble. Part of that is due to the special stem tubing, but the other part is this latch, which remains one of my favorites for being firm and easy to use. And I like that it has two safety catches. Though, as with most stem latches, I recommend a quick spray of lithium grease here to keep it working quietly and smoothly. The V3 is the first generation of Phantom with app control. You can use buttons in the cockpit or the app to change ride modes, toggle lights on or off, or enable zero start and cruise control. But the app lets you control deeper features too. There's an onboard navigation function, which will also tell you your remaining range and you can record your rides or check out detailed parameters of your scooter. It can also come in handy if your scooter needs service because you can transmit data to Apollo to help diagnose your scooter. The quad shocks don't have any hydraulic damping, but because there are four of them, the internal friction provides enough damping to keep it from feeling too bouncy. They also have bushings at the top and bottom of travel to keep them from topping out or bottoming out harshly. And if you're a heavier rider, having the springs on the outside makes it easier to add more spring preload to keep the suspension in the optimal range for your weight. The Phantom feels more road focused than off-road, but it does fine on gravel and trails and has a huge amount of ground clearance. And if you happen to run into some rain, it's got reasonably good fender protection and its water protection rating is IP54. So it's okay for light rain, but stay out of puddles if you can. The ESG certified top speed of the V3 is exactly one mile per hour faster than the V2 at 40.7 miles per hour, which as I've often said, is about as fast as I wanna go on 10 inch tires. Stability is very good, in other words, there was no side to side head shake when sustaining top speed or when I let off the throttle at the end of the speed run. That said, it wasn't completely smooth as speed. At above 35 miles per hour, our particular scooter had some front tire vibration in the vertical direction, similar to what we've experienced on the Vissette 10 Plus. Nothing dangerous, and in both cases, I think it could be cured by balancing the front tires and or more suspension damping. Tested range was about what we'd expect. I covered 28.4 miles, riding fairly aggressively on our hilly range test course. That's it's three miles less than the Fanda V2, but it makes sense because I was riding the V3 in Ludo mode the whole time. The specified maximum range is 40 miles, but to go that far, you probably need to keep it under 15 miles per hour and be on relatively flat ground. One thing to watch out for is at the end of the range test, 
the scooter indicated 10% battery remaining for a very long time and eventually dropped straight to zero. Now, this is an early version of the V3 firmware, so I expect we'll see an update that fixes this soon. I didn't track it during the ride, but the app's indicated range remaining prediction was pretty much spot on. In Ludo mode, zero to 30 arrives in 7.3 seconds. That's more than a second faster than the Phantom V2, though still not quite as quick as the Vissette or Mantis King GT. One of the big advantages of riding a dual motor electric scooter is being able to climb basically any hill at about as fast as you would drive it in a car. The Phantom V3 beat the V2 to the top of our test hill by 0.3 seconds, hitting 22.6 miles per hour by the end of the run, but again coming in behind the Vissette 10 Plus and Mantis King GT. The Phantom stem latches to the deck to make it easier to carry, and you'd think that that's something that scooters have always done, but before the Phantom, that wasn't always the case. At 75.8 pounds, the V3 is no lightweight, but it's one of the most portable scooters in its class when it comes to overall length, and strangely, that's due to the quad shocks. This is an advantage I've never heard anybody else talk about. The Phantom's deck is longer than many other scooters at 20.5 inches. It's basically the benchmark for good deck size. So how can the deck of the Phantom be two inches longer than the deck of the Vissette 10 Plus, while the Phantom's overall length is two inches shorter than the Vissette? Of course, the answer is, it's the shocks. If you put the shocks alongside the wheels instead of between the wheels and the deck, you get a long, comfortable deck and a shorter, more portable scooter. Pros of the Phantom V3 include, still the best overall ergonomics in its class, best regen brakes of any scooter in its class, and it's the only one of the three comparison scooters with an app. Cons include, Quad shocks are good, but hydraulic damping would make them even better. It has a little less performance per dollar than the comparison scooters. We'd love to see tubeless tires on the next generation, and we wish the display was brighter. Let's have a look at the Vissette 10 Plus. This scooter is quicker to 30 miles per hour and uphill than the V3, but the throttle is more abrupt, the Phantom Out breaks it, and check out the foot room. Now, check it out compared to the Phantom V3. This thing's got room for days. The Manus King GT has the smoothest suspension from adjustable hydraulic coilovers front and rear and the longest range of the group, but has a fairly large dead zone in the throttle and the lowest weight limit of the group at 265 pounds. As roomy as the Phantom's deck is, the Synergy Tsunami's deck is even bigger, along with the handlebar height, and the Tsunami's 350 pound weight limit is extra large as well. But it's the slowest hill climber of the group, and its brand isn't as well known yet as the other three. So who's the Phantom V3 for? Well, whether you live in a house with a garage or an apartment building with two flights of stairs, any of the comparison scooters are probably gonna fit with your living situation if you're reasonably fit yourself, because 75 pounds is still a big lift. <gasps> All of them are an absolute blast to ride on the weekends and will get you to work faster than a car. But while the Vissette and Mantis King GT get you there with a little more raw performance per dollar, the Phantom does it with a little more overall comfort and finesse. Plus, you get an app. If you're looking at light heavyweight scooters, you should definitely have the V3 on your list. And for those of you who already have a V2, I think the regen brakes alone make it worth the upgrade. If it's anything like the previous generations, the first wave of V3s would probably sell out fairly quickly. So check out the link in this video's description for details on how to get your own V3. Using the link helps support the work it takes to make these reviews. And if there's a coupon code available, we'll put it down there too.